Boy, oh boy, guys, do we have a show today. Welcome back to PK Out Loud. Today, we're joined by guest Jamil Domji, who is an internationally renowned real estate investor and entrepreneur whose true passion is to empower others to create generational wealth through real estate. Jamil co-founded Keegley, which is a nationally franchised real estate wholesaling outlet operating in 118 markets and counting. And get this, he started Astro Flipping, which is the largest wholesaling community in real estate ever created with over 4,000 active members right now and tens of millions of dollars in student profits. His success actually landed him on national television as the host of A&E's popular show, Triple Digit Flip. Listen, the common thread in all of Jamil's activities is his profound commitment to teaching others how to invest and profit in real estate in a smart, strategic, and ethical way. And to Jamil, running a profitable real estate business while upholding values of integrity and honor are synonymous, and his teachings embody this. Enjoy this one, guys. Are you having fun? Yeah, man. This is, this is so good. Before we roll, I got Keegley. Hey. Astro and your website up. Wow. You know what's really funny? I've never put that red t-shirt on and somehow they they found a way to that I never I've, that's not even my body. Really? Yeah. They got they got a guy with equal titties, but that's not me. <laughs> I've never put that polo on before. How did they do that? That's Those are my arms. Body? Those are my arms. That's a, one of my watches. That's so how, what did they do? I don't know about that. You've worn it. Never. Look, you can't see my chain. You would if that was if it was me. Oh. Always got a chain, little little chain on the inside. That's no, there's no chain in here. That's not my body. Those plus he has nipples. I don't have nipples. <laughs> it's true, right? He's got nips. I don't have nips. Nips, my nips go in. Those are Audis. Those are. My, I didn't know they made Audis and Innies. I have Innies. Yeah, they're not. They're very <laughs> rare. We are joined today by. You used to be a comedian, right? You you're never not a comedian. If you if you claim comedian, it's for life. I used to do stand-up sketch. I trained classically with the Upright Citizens Brigade, Second City. Where's that at? In LA. So how hard is it to be a comedian? You have to stand up and just regurgitate a pitch. Well, it's, you know, there, there's a lot to it, right? There's a science to a joke. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, we've got these trap doors in our brain that if we hit people with the right element of surprise, redirect where their thinking is going, and then, you know, pop out with something else. The, you, the brain will automatically laugh. It's like it's yeah. triggered by that surprise, right? So there's that. There's also the rule of threes, like really being able to heighten something. There's a concept called the game. And, you know, an, impro an improvisation when you're, you know, in a scene and somebody just says, hey, let's do a scene about, um, you know, Bobby's uh, tan. Is this a spray tan? Anyhow, so let's do a scene about Bobby's tan, right? I mean, you know, it's a yes and thing. So we're talking about you. You can't then be like, "What are you talking about? He's not. He doesn't have a tan because that doesn't let the scene progress, right?" Mm -hmm. But you keep playing until somebody says something absurd, and the audience will laugh. And then you take that piece and you heighten it. So if whatever the game was, it's like it's not a fake tan. It's um, I don't know. Maybe he covers himself in chocolate every morning, right? So then, okay, well, that's the game. Bobby covering himself in weird stuff. Then what can we heighten that to to get it to the point where Bobby's covering himself in semen? You know, at the at the end. Like, that's that's the, like, you know, that yeah. could be the heightened version of it. But, um, and, you know, so, so comedy is scientific. And it actually ruined it for me because once I learned – how comedy works i couldn't watch comedy movies comedy shows anymore because i knew where it was going to go mm. so after i ran you know my course in la and i kind of took a step back from writing jokes and being in that world now i'm enjoying comedy movies again and it's fun uh, i just you're intertwining it that's why i brought yeah. it up for a reason yeah the, yeah because of this you, you saw my comment the other day yeah <laughs> you, I, i'm not going to play it but there's this clip that you're like dogs smell each other's buttholes and that's the that's the the, the hook and I'm like yeah. oh my god this guy's a genius and then he, you're you're talking basically about how they they smell each other's shit and humans should do the same thing pretty much but that's comedy correct and yeah. it gets people to stop and there were so many people's comments that you might not do business with but they love your content on your page and you do it I mean almost every week there's Something. There's something. Some, I flashed somebody uh, last week somewhere. I have a brand manager who I Straight just... Straight out of Compton. Yes. I mean, that stuff does not come to my brain. No, no. And your your profile picture, <laughs> Compton. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's just me superimposed on Easy E's body. I'm about to do a photo shoot today with a Jerry curl. <laughs> I don't know if that's politically correct or not, but uh, the term Jerry curl? No, just me wearing one. Oh. But we'll see. I'm trying to get canceled because if I get canceled, then I'm done. I'm, you know, I, I've been looking for an out. <laughs> So if okay. cancellation is the out, then so be it. So, okay, all, f- all jokes aside, yeah. good to have you here. Thank you, First brother. of all, um, I was spending some time this morning, and I want to get so far into the weeds of Keegley, this franchising model, all these sort of things. Give us an overview of just where this came from. Where did your history of wholesaling come from? How did you get into all this? Great, great stuff. So I started wholesaling over 20 years ago. In my early 20s, I, uh, you know, originally I'm East Indian from Canada, you know, born in America, but raised in Canada. My parents gave me one option for what would be a successful son that would make them proud. And it was to be Dr. Damji, right? Like the rest of my family, that's what I was supposed to do. So I do really well in my undergrad in university and which now you can tell I'm Canadian because I didn't say college. I do really well in my uh, post-secondary and I don't get into medical school. I'm rejected. And that first rejection was just incredibly difficult for me to understand because I then saw that I put all of the fu- all of my future in somebody else's hands. And so I embark on this world of entrepreneurship. I like I say, you know what, F college, F be trying to be a doctor. I didn't want to be a doctor for the right reasons anyways. I was only doing it for the money, so good good riddance. I hope that whoever does get my spot uh does well and doesn't kill people, right? Yeah. So Lo and behold, I'm in this entrepreneurial world, and uh, I'm in a company where, you know, in the infancy of the internet, trying to sell people websites in like 2000. We didn't do well in that business, but it put me in proximity to somebody who was involved in real estate development. And I'm listening to these guys gripe, uh, you know, about this deal that they're doing where they're going to make $160,000, and my mind is just blown, right? I'm like, a hundred and one deal. On one deal, right? And 2000 is. Yeah, substantially more than today. Of, of course, right? Yeah. And then they're just talking about this, you know, like it's normal. And I can't help but get involved, right? I said, how do I, what do I do? How do I play in this? Is there anything that I can bring to the table? They're like, well, you're not a realtor. You don't have any money. You have no credit. Not really seeing how you can fit yourself in. And they just kind of dismiss me and they carry on. Then they start griping about not having enough building lots to do these projects on. And Immediately, I see the need, right? So I interject again, and I said, okay, well, tell me about that. Well, they said, if you can find us houses that we can demolish and do these kinds of projects on, we'll buy those all day. Thank you. Next day, walking my dog. I'm actually residing in a neighborhood where this kind of development's happening. I live in a basement suite, and it's a neighborhood in Calgary called Parkdale. I'm in this little basement suite. I couldn't rent the house that I ended up calling on earlier by a few months because it was $200 out of my budget. But I'm walking down the street and I see the for rent sign still there. So I think, okay, well, let's call her up. Call her up and I just lay it out. Hey, look, you've been unsuccessful renting this house. Would you sell it for the right price? Okay, what's the price? 350 grand. Thank you. I'll call you back. Go to the office, talk to my friend. How much would you guys buy this house for? Well, we'd pay 400,000 for that house all day long. Thank you. So now I got a $50,000 problem to solve, right? I, I want to point out just how my thinking was different than most people's in this because what you would normally do is say, you'd pay 400 I can get it for 350 And then they would get involved and kind of maybe give me a couple grand sure. and tell me to go away, you know. But yeah. my, my thought wasn't that. I, I thought, how could I be involved, right? And this it, is your first deal that you're first thinking deal like this. ever, right? Yeah. So I call all my relatives. Who can lend me three hundred and fifty grand? Nobody wants to do it. I talk to my parents. Nobody, they can't help. And so now I just start to get resourceful. I get to the yellow pages and I start calling attorneys. And a real estate attorney in Calgary by the name of David Steed, he's been since disbarred. So I probably would have sent so many people to him, but I don't know why he got disbarred. But anyhow, he was so fresh out of law school at that time. He didn't have a legal secretary running his phone. So he answers the phone and I tell him what my situation is. He's like, oh, this is easy. It's called a skip transfer. I'm like, okay, well, tell me about this. He says, well, you're going to need two contracts, one where you're the buyer of the property. Just make sure that on your buyer name you write whatever your name is, Jamil Damji, and or nominee or and or assignee. That's important. Got it. Now, your purchase price is going to be 350 on the first contract, and then 
all the other details, like the closing day, the title attorney, the closing attorney, which will be me, any other conditions or situations that she puts in that contract, you have to make sure they line up on contract one and contract two. On the second contract, you're going to be the seller. The buyer is going to be the person who will take it for 400 grand. So just that price will change. And then everything else has to line up with yeah. the first contract. Once you've got those two things, bring them to me. Okay, cool. Then what? Then I'll just do my work, and in a couple of weeks, I'll have a check for you. Hmm. So I do it. I get the contract from the seller. I get the contract from the buyer. Take them both to David Steed's office. A couple of weeks later, he calls me up and says, I have a cashier's check for you here for $47,000 and change. <laughs> and for me, for a guy who you know, grew up in a very, very working middle class home, latchkey kid, my parents worked 12-hour days, Really just, I had such limiting beliefs around money. My grandmother, interesting, my grandmother's motto was, we don't have any money and we never will. Anytime we'd ask for stuff, anytime we would bring things up, it was just a part of the narrative in my home mm. that we came from a class of people that would never have money. Just It'll accept it. It'll stay that it. way forever. It'll stay that way. So, so when they talk about generational curses, that's the curse. The curse is the thinking. She was so cursed with this limiting thought that she gave it to her kids and her kids gave it to us. And the virus of lack, the virus of scarcity, the virus of limitation is so hard to kill. There's no vaccine for that, right? It's, it's you have to break that thinking. You've got you've to reject it at such a deep level that you can shatter that so that you can move on and do other things. And so that for me, that first deal is what shattered the limiting thinking, right? Because I thought, wow, I got $47,000 in my pocket. And that's crazy. It's crazy. But because you were, you were at some point, you were saying to yourself, probably I'm guessing that $47,000 is a year to a year and a half, maybe two years of work. Correct. And correct. In a snap of a finger, you look at your bank account, you got yeah. almost 50 G's. And, and look at how, look at how, um, strong this limiting thinking was i kept that cashier's check in my wallet for four months i didn't, didn't want to cash it you didn't cash it no why i was scared i thought I, I have something to lose yeah if i cash it i'm going to spend it's it I'm, I'm never going to get this money again and so this is my thinking right and then somebody yeah. says jamil these things expire in six months you have <laughs> to cash this check just yeah. don't use that account but like cash it anyways wow. so i do and you know thankfully that wasn't my only deal. I just repeated in what I had done the first place, right? Yes. But this now, this time now I went and got it, uh, the newspaper and in the newspaper, there was this section called the classifieds yep. and in the classifieds they'd have for rents, right? Mm -hmm. So I would always get the paper on the fourth, fifth, sixth of the month. Cause I was waiting for everybody to not have rented their property out over the, yep. uh, in the beginning of the month or the month prior. And then I would just hit the pain point. You still got this property available. It's the sixth of the month right now. What's your plan? Right. You want to sell it? Because I could potentially yeah. buy it. And I'd get lots of no's, but eventually I'd get some yeses, and that would turn into more deals. And then now my mind starts looking for, okay, well, what makes a wholesale deal? Well, a wholesale deal comes from a project, the ability to force appreciation or make something more than what's already there. So I, the, the idea of finding potential became my obsession right so just to back up real quick so they understand this term is called wholesaling correct and you're assigning you're finding a deal for a hundred thousand saying i'll give you a hundred thousand getting it under contract and then going to somebody else for 150,000. what you're just explaining correct okay this is perfect because what i want to talk about today specifically is people that want to invest their money which is who follow me they don't have money this is where the money comes in. Do they need a license yeah. to do this? No, sir. Okay. You don't need a license. You don't need, a, um, you know, you don't even need money, honestly, because right. you can get you need into the contacts. A, yeah, you need you, to do what you're doing. Correct. And so you built an entire model surrounded by basically what you just mentioned, just on a tech scale in 2024. Correct. Where from what I can see, you've got on the le you, on this front page, these are people looking to purchase properties. So depends on what side of the business you're looking at, right? right? So at some level, so this could possibly be 
people wanting so these are guys who want deals right they so want if, deals if, and then you could have people that can come up here and submit a deal correct if they, so you're the middle correct and you yeah. get a piece on everything with that. yeah yeah it's an amazing business it really is wow that's incredible so tell me from when you first started to today is have, have laws changed in the way that you can approach this what's sure. what what about this business has changed that made it like in trading the term forex is like oh and in, in real estate, I feel like the term wholesaling is kind of the same. The same. Yeah. So, you know, tell me a little bit about that. How has it changed to today in, well, in terms of the development of it? So, you know how in Forex, there's bad apples, there's bad actors, right. and then there's people who do it legitimately, right? Why I'm sitting in here with you today is because I researched you. I know you. We've got mutual friends. And I've watched your content. And I'm like, this guy's as legit as it gets. He's not out here trying to, you know, scam people. He doesn't have like a PAM account or something he's trying oh. <laughs> to, you know, do things with. I got actually got involved in a Ponzi scheme where I lost a million dollars on a Forex account. I was aware PAM of account. it yeah. through a mutual barber. <laughs> through a mutual barber. It was heartbreaking, right? Yeah. Like it was one of the worst things for me. And so Forex kind of give me the same thing, like, ah, right? right? Like, but I do know that there's legitimacy in Forex. You just, there's, you got to find the right people. Well, in wholesaling, it was very much the same, right? I think the people in the past who were teaching folks how to wholesale taught people how to lie mm -hmm. because they had a problem because they were worried like, oh, I don't want anybody to know what I'm doing. I don't want the seller to know that I'm going to sell my contract because they're going to get mad at me. I don't want my buyer to know how much money I'm going to make. So I'm going to hide how much money I'm going to make. It was this like real like gross kind of energy that was being placed on it because People didn't understand that the wholesale step-up model is legitimate in every business model, right? You yeah. look at McDonald's, for instance, right? I go to the McDonald's today. I pay 8 bucks for a Big Mac. Well, okay, it's $8 for a Big Mac. How much is that patty worth? And how much was it worth in the, in the cow? So yeah. you, you, you take it from the farm where it's like we got potatoes. We're you know, baking bread. We've we're, we're got the cow. And everything increases as it goes through transportation, packaging, processing, yep. until it gets to the point where it's in the McDonald's and now it's eight bucks, right? It's Same thing with a house. Yeah. Convenience and location. Yes. Basically. In front of you, it's right. here. Right. Yeah. And the people who are doing these projects, right? I do fix and flip projects. I can't do all of them. I can do some of them. I do you know, a handful every year. But because I've got a marketing machine out there looking for these projects and looking for these opportunities, there are people just like me who fix and flip, but they don't have the machine. They don't have yeah. the time. They don't want to spend the money to do the marketing or make the phone calls. So they're just looking for the opportunity in a box. Can you give me the fix and flip opportunity that I will, I will assess the numbers. You don't got to tell me what this thing will be worth with a remodel. I know what it'll be worth because I know how to do that. You don't have to tell me how much the remodel is going to cost. I know how much it's going to cost me. You just tell me what I can pay for it, and I will do my due diligence from there. Got it. Perfect. So my job is to bring an opportunity to, in a box to, a, to another rehabber or some kind of a real estate investor who's going to own that piece, yeah. either for a rental or for a fix and flip or whatever their exit strategy is. And I will show them, here's what I think about this deal. This is the numbers. This is what I'm seeing. But of course, do your due diligence. And if you feel that you like this deal, and I think you've bought some from us in the past. So just looking at this deal, you see it, you like it, cool. Uh, for the most part, they're not upset that I'm making mm. 10 or 15 grand assigning the contract over because they're like, thank you. I didn't want to have to do that work anyways. I just Save wanted the time. deal. Save some time, energy, Save brain damage. Money. Yeah. That's really interesting. So there's there's a knack in finding these deals. There is. You're, so there's a skill set surrounded by this. Big time. Totally. I was um, when I was doing a little research on all of this. Um, Pace Morby's your business partner. He's a in, he's my uh, competitor in many ways. Yeah, best it's an friend. interesting dynamic. Yeah. It seems like which him. Funny enough, um, I have a ton of friends in real estate, and this whole sub two thing is like they're all talking about. It. Everybody's talking about. Sure. It, right. And. He, he commented on, I think it was Grant Cardone's podcast, where he said, nobody does more wholesale deals than you. Yes. How do you do that? How do you grow the team? That's what I'm so interested in, hiring the team and the marketing arm. Like, where did that start where you're now able to get this snowball of thousands of people basically looking for deals for you today? I think it's really interesting, that process. You know, that wasn't my initial intent. So there was a time when my social media profiles had the had a picture of an owl on them 
Yeah, it was just off of. I was offline, totally offline. Okay, I didn't know if that signified. Yeah, something. and just does that you, signify anything or just? You well, just no, chose I now? like an owl. You know, they're a cool mm-hmm. animal and they represent wisdom and whatnot. Also, they're funny looking birds. So I just was like, yeah, yeah this is cool, right? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't check my DMs. Pace DM me like eight years ago. And he was needing advice about a deal that he was involved in, somebody that he knew I knew. And he was asking if he could take me out, buy me a sandwich, and get some advice. It took me two weeks to reply to him because I'm not in my DMs. I didn't even know how to look in my DMs. Finally, I'm, I do see it, and I respond, and I'm like, sure, you know, what's your number? Responds back right away because it's Pace. Mm-hmm. And we end up the next day at an AJ's having a sandwich, right? And he's telling me about this guy and, um, you know, Anyhow, I'm not going to get into that story because you asked about how did I snowball into this. Well, right then, Pace was like, what are you doing, dude? You know, you're the, like, everybody's talking about you. Everybody's saying that if you want to do wholesale deals or if you want to buy wholesale deals, if you want to sell wholesale deals, if you want to even know anything about wholesaling, Jamil's the guy. And I can't find you anywhere. I can't find you on Facebook. I can't find you on Instagram. I can't find you on LinkedIn. You're invisible. Why do you do that? And I'm like, because I like mystery. Interesting. And he's like, well, maybe the mystery needs to be solved. And so he, you know, kind of coaxes me into building my online profile. And I do. And then a gentleman by the name of Brent Daniels, he's another wholesaler in our space. He comes to me and says, hey, now that you're not an owl on Instagram anymore, you think you want to come on my podcast? Because you are the number one wholesaler in America. And I've, I, have to, I get to interview like a guy who did a deal here and a guy who did a deal here. Meanwhile, you did a thousand last year. Would you please come on my podcast? And I'm like, sure, I'll come on. So I go into his podcast. Podcast does really well. Another gentleman by the name of Max Maxwell, who's a well-known influencer in this space, says, dude, I saw that podcast you did with Brent Daniels. Do you really did a a thousand deals last year? I'm like, yeah, you got to come out here and talk to me. So then I go to Max Maxwell's office and I talk to him and he's like, bro, I, I am shocked. Like nobody does this much volume. That's what I'm asking too. Yeah. How, How many people were on your team at that time? So a thousand a, deals, but I mean, you're deals talking three year. deals a day. Yeah, pretty much. That's crazy. Crazy town. And it's even, you know. What market? All over. So, at the, well, at that time, we were just in Phoenix and Florida. Oh, my God. So that was just, you know, volume here and volume, a little bit of volume in Florida, but that's it. Now we're, you know, well over in over 100 markets in the United States. Yeah, I mentioned 118 markets. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's it you know the volume has definitely grown. My my corporate stores don't do have I haven't done a thousand deals since like that was a very big year for us. So, you know we average anywhere between six fifty to like eight hundred deals a year in my corporate stores, and then my franchises they're they're doing well. You know, um, it's That's just it's wild. it's really neat, dude. But it snowballed because I started building a brand. It's, I started going online, and then COVID happens, so mm. I'm bored. And I'm walking around my neighborhood. And uh, sorry, not to cut you off. At the time of COVID, have you have you, you've you've really started going all in on your social? No, no not, not yet. Barely. Barely. I'm just not an owl anymore. You're just not. You just have a profile picture. I have a profile picture. <laughs> a little bit about me. Yeah. Um. You know, I post here and there occasionally. Nothing, nothing like this. Nothing yet. like this yet. I I Bobby. I I I meet Bobby a little bit before COVID happens. Uh, from Pace. Pace was he had used him freelance on a project here or there. And now all of a sudden it's, you know, March 2020 and, and I'm bored AF, right? And what am I going to do? So, so I call Bobby up and I'm like, hey, I think I want to start a YouTube channel. He's like, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> so, you know, Bobby comes on over and we start a YouTube channel. And uh, we, the first video I ever make was how to comp houses. That's like still my biggest video on my channel. It's crazy. Probably um, like one of the least effort videos. Yeah, too. my least effort videos. Yeah, like I'm like I'm way. just in front of my whiteboard. It's like I've spent so much time and money on them now, and like nobody cares. But like back then, it's it was funny. just like here's fat boy in front of a whiteboard. Let's watch him, and so that does really good. <laughs> and then I'm walking around my neighborhood, and I just start spouting off things that I've done in over in the thousands of deals that I've done. Right. On camera. On camera. Like, yeah. here's how I find deals. Here's how I, you know, lock them up. Here's the things I say to people. Here's what I say to my buyers. Here's what I say to my sellers. Here's how I get real estate agents to like me. Here's how I get title companies All to work with me. All for free on YouTube. All for free on By the Instagram way, not to, YouTube, not to yeah. cut them off, but... Go to his YouTube channel, guys, if you're trying to learn how to do this. It's all, it's all free. It's all free. We, we don't have a full 10-hour podcast yeah. here to talk about that, but all for free on YouTube. Correct, correct. I think... I'll let you continue, but the, there's... 
I stress doing this, guys, because what what happens a lot of times is when when somebody doesn't buy something, they don't put as much value on it. And and what I find is a lot of guys put the same value in their paid information as they do free. They just maybe make it a little bit easier to follow when it's paid. It's all still right there. Yeah. Go for free on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Uh, go look at everything that I get messages all the time from people who are really, really just gung ho. And they're like, Jamil, thank you so much for all the free content. I'm joining Astro Flipping now that I've done my first deal because of you. But I, now I want wow. a community. Now I want to be a part of the community because yeah. I, I see the value in JVing. See, here, here's the thing, right? People who join Astro Flipping, they're not joining. They, sure, they're going to get an education. But it's the over 5,000 people in the community who Doing are there the to help thing. you walk. Hungry. Hungry, hold your hand, help you comp, help yeah. you evaluate. They have access to deals. They've got access to buyers. You can just plug in and start playing right away by joining the community. Now, if you want to be a lone wolf and you're like, I don't care, I just want to learn, go to my YouTube, learn, right? Figure mm. it out. And and But there should be no excuse. If you have the drive, and here's, I'm sure you get this all the time, Patrick. You get people who DM you saying, I just need a chance. Just give me a chance. Just, you Every know, week. help me out. Help me out. Okay, here's, you want, go to my YouTube channel, <laughs> watch these videos, and then come back and tell me what you learned. Never. You'll never hear from them again. Never hear from them again. And it's this, it's the saddest thing because it's like you took the time to reach out and say, I need a chance. And then I gave you the chance and you gave up on yourself. Yeah. It's, it's the same question that I get. What stock should I buy? Here's the video on how to decide what stock to buy. Well, no, what stock should I buy? It's the same thing for you. What, what house should I sell? Here's a video on how to find the next house yeah. to sell. It, it, it's the same thing. By the way, guys, if you look on the screen here, astroflipping.com, if you want to check that out. Uh, there's ebooks, merch, course information. It's all right there for you guys to check out. By the way, there's no like affiliate deal between us. I just thank I, you. I yeah. mean, I appreciate you just you know. Yeah, um, yeah, there's there's zero. I genuinely find this business interesting because what other business can you get in with no money? Right. What's another comparable business that you can get in at this scale, no money, no license? I I would. I think creative finances. You yeah, know, the stuff I mean, there's that a couple does. things, but yeah. it's, this seems like one of the only. Quick, easy, get going business. It is, and creative finance also is good, but it requires just more. It's 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 got more pieces to it, right? So you need to understand debt. You need to understand how to how to know what is good debt versus like not good debt. And so I right. think for the most part, people really at the entry level of wanting to get involved in real estate investing, wholesaling is your best starting point because like all you need to do is spot a deal. That's all you need to be able to do is figure out how to spot a deal. And everything else can, can be deals, done for buyers you. buyers will eat it up. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. All day long. So I teach that, right? Like one of the and, – and I, again, for, I, on, for free, every – twice a week I have that show straight out of Compton where I will – I just <laughs> so let cool. – people bring me an address and say to me, how much should I buy this for? What's it worth? And I comp it right for them on, live on YouTube – and I show them why I'm coming up with the numbers. How, I'm co why? Here's what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. This is why I th think it's going to be worth this with a remodel. This is why I think you need to pay for you offer this amount based off its current condition. Now they're armed with how much I should pay and what it's worth. Go put it together. Yeah. Right? So is the hardest part the paperwork, you think? Even or, that, I mean I mean is that not, that's probably all in the in the information yeah. that you do, but what's the hardest part? What would you say? Just getting at your ass up and doing it. Got I think it. honestly, overcoming self, overcoming limits, overcoming the like, what if I do this and everybody laughs at me or, or overcoming that idea of like, oh my God, I'm going to be judged by my friends and my family because I'm trying to do something different. It's really That's crazy to me. It's, but it's true. It's it a real true. thing, right? People have this like, unre they've got this like insane amount of fear of judgment from the, from the people that they, that they think love them or that they love. Because they're worried about the image, they're worried, of, or maybe they have tried things in the past and failed. Mm -hmm. But you know, the thing is, is that did you fail or did you quit? That's the real so question, good. right? So if you didn't, fa if you quit, then you quit. You failed yourself. Yeah. And maybe that's the real thing you need to get to right now. Maybe the issue isn't whether or not the things that you've been trying work. Yeah. Have you given yourself enough of a chance to actually make it happen? You got to give yourself some time. You, you give do. Give yourself some grace. 
Big time. And and that's why a lot of the content that I do on YouTube is also mindset related to get people so out important. of patterns, right? Like, man, everything is a pattern. Everything in our life is a pattern. You're going to keep running into the same patterns if you don't solve the pattern. You don't yeah. fix the prop. The, if you don't bring a higher level of mind to a problem, then you're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again until you recognize the pattern and make a new choice. So coming from what you mentioned earlier with your grandmother, what was the shift? Did you study something? Did you just go out there and try it? You had to have, you, you had to have these limiting beliefs, yeah. as you mentioned. Yeah. What was the shift? Was it that first deal or even if it was before that first deal, it's, how did you get up off the couch and do so it? It's so funny. Tupac. Tupac. Yeah, man. It's a, it's crazy, bro. Like I, I got so inspired. I was in the, you know, I'd be sitting there listening to him in a dark room, you know, just mm -hmm. like vibing, listen, you know, headphones on. And I think that's why I got the nineties gangster rap vibe in a lot of my stuff. And you know why I'm, I'm a big Pac fan and, you know, I'm even friends with the surviving outlaws now as they're, you know, senior citizens like me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it's like, yeah, man, he, he truly inspired me to just get off my ass. Wow. And I, and then I did. And then, you know, once I realized that I could move and I could, and I could make moves, then I didn't need to be convinced anymore. I, I just kept going. So uh, doing all of this, is already impressive enough, but then it landed you on A and E, yeah. which I understand that you don't film it anymore, which we can talk about. Yeah, because doing a TV show, I even saw some friends try to start one, which is crazy. Yeah, but talk about this show on A and E called Triple Digit Flip. Just a little bit about what it's about, but more so, I want you to talk. I want you to expose TV a little bit. Sure. Uh, you know some of the things about like the, I mean the nuances of like. It's not as ha it's not happening as fast as TV always makes oh, it seem. Oh, I've got a great story for that. You know, I, I love to hear yeah. about it. Yeah. So you know, the TV show came because Pace and I we put out a YouTube video where him and I were walking through a home together, and we invited you know just a couple of people off social media to come and walk through this house live, and like sixty people showed up. We just posted on stories, and sixty wow. people show up to walk through this house. It was wild. Bobby's filming it. It's a uh, police officer who had passed away we were buying the house on a probate deal and so the house was just a mess it was like a total hoarder situation but the guy had his like police uniforms and all the things still hanging around in the house so i'm just being funny putting on the cop bomber jacket and of course making jokes about the way he lived and um a and e finds the clip the youtube video the youtube video and they're oh like we love these guys they're hilarious they're funny let's let's get on a uh, zoom with them now Pace and I each were getting reached out to by a lot of production companies claiming to have TV deals and needing to find talent. And we didn't really respond to any of them. Just like this one, we didn't respond right away. And finally, Pace, you know, he's like, hey, have, this pers have these people been trying to reach out to you? And I'm like, yeah, I just blocked them. He's like, yeah, they said that. <laughs> you think, you think wow. we should try giving them a chance? Because they're pretty persistent. And, they're, and their email is from at A&E Networks. I'm like... <laughs> You're my and this is... Is this before or during? Is this around COVID time when this happens? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's COVID time. So we we meet them. Yeah. We we get on the Zoom and I I Google the woman who's who's on the Zoom with me and I'm like, oh crap, that's the vice president of alternative programming at A and E. So I'm like, yeah. So what what can I do? How, how can we help you? So we get into this conversation with them and you know most times when you want a TV show, they're like, okay, we're gonna come out shoot a teaser. Yeah, the sizzle reel. Sizzle reel. I watched one of these and happen. It's weird. Sizzle goes to pilot. Then pilot, they look at it. They're like, mm, he's too fat. Mm, he's too this. Mm, I, we need a girl. And then they're like, okay. Then pilot might go to like a couple episodes ordered. We, for whatever reason, showed so well on the Zoom. They call us back and say, we're moving right to series. We want to order 10 episodes. You guys have a TV show. And we're like, whoa, okay. So they send over some producers. They don't even know what the show is yet. We don't even know what the show is yet. So they send out the executive producer to come follow us around and see what it is, right? What are these guys doing? And so she spends a couple of days with Pace. She spends a couple of days with me. She spends a couple of days with my sister, a couple of days with Laura, her, his wife. And she's like, okay, I think I figured out what the show is. Obviously, we need to do a flipping show because this is the genre. Mm -hmm. You guys are flipping properties, so we'll focus mainly on that. 
so, you know, we did get to introduce wholesaling into the show. We did get to introduce a little bit of creative finance into the show, not as much as we had wanted to because they needed house porn. Right. They needed the like reveal. The big reveal was super important to them. Mm. Diving into the numbers of the deal was super important to them. So all that stuff was fine and dandy and it was legit. Like they we had told them prior, hey, look, we're not interested in negativity. We're not interested in fake drama. A and E was a great partner for that because they didn't okay. they didn't ask us. So to, I was gonna ask. Yeah, I've heard a lot of shows try to fabricate. They do, stuff. they do. And and they didn't ask us to do that. They were really respective of the fact that we love our crew, we love our mm. we love each other. We're not we're not negative people. We're positive, loving human beings. In fact, they let us lean into that in the show because one of the, one of the segments were called intentions. And this is something that I do on all my projects is I write positive intentions into the walls of the projects that we do Mm. because I did it at my home, but that I built and the energy in my home is incredible. If you come into my house, you're like, bro, this house like just feels different. It's because we've got, positive words in the walls Mm -hmm. right and that energy is real and so at least i believe it and so people can feel it 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 feels tangible it feels different you can sense it coming into the house and so we do that in our flips because i want that to still carry on and it was one of the most popular segments in the show people loved it i get dm'd from folks all the time saying i'm doing this in my house now i'm doing it in my flip so it kind of went you know and became a thing but I, you know, to kind of demystify, which is what you were asking, you know, about the reality of it. So when you watch one episode, you, you, they kind of make it move at such a pace where you think it all happened in a day. Right. But it doesn't, right? You got to find a house. You got to demo the house. You got to fix the house. That's going to take time, permits, all these things. They require time. And so start to finish, it could take six to 10 months. Got it. And so meanwhile, in that six to 10 months, you got to look the same. You can't, you know, lose weight. You can't. Yeah, I don't know you personally too much yet, but I'm yeah. looking. I'm not. This is coming from a good-hearted place. You yeah. look a little different, my uh, friend. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't sure. know what you're doing, but you're looking For good. Sure. Lots of meth. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. No, you're that, looking great. That's, that's not, that's so, not what it so, is. So, uh, you're being serious though? They would get mad at you for losing weight? Yeah, I was getting, I'd get a, I'd get a message like, hey, you know, we can see that you've put some, you've dropped you some You got to stay fat. It was like they wouldn't necessarily say like be fat, (laughs) right? But they're like, you know, the episode, like it's like your face is changing. You could, you know, stand to plump up a little bit. And I'm like, so what do you want me to do? Eat some ice cream before I go to sleep or something? I'm like, I'm just worn out and I'm just losing weight. And they're like, I don't know, you know, kind of figure it out. And then I would notice craft services would be richer food. Like they'd have like all this like real junk on set for us all day long, just trying to plump it up a little bit, right? So... That was funny, but you know, I, I did lose weight and I lost weight after the wrapping of the second season. It was completely unrelated to the show. I had, um, I was just, you know, first tired of being heavy like that. Second, not that I hadn't been exercising. I was actually exercising seven days a week, but I was doing the wrong kind of workout. I was doing hit Mm -hmm. and you know, for me and my, my body chemistry hit just wasn't the right thing. So my cortisol levels were getting spiked after hit really terribly high. And my body was going into such stress that it thought I was being murdered. Like it was such a high, the high impact or the high intensity was just too much for my body. So the cortisol was causing me to store stomach fat. And then I was actually gaining weight, exercising seven days a week. My doctor tells me to come do a blood test after a workout to prove this theory. She's right. So I changed my workout from hit to elliptical machine and I lose 11 pounds the first month, 10 pounds the next. Wow. And way easier workout. Way easier workout. And I'm, I'm down 80 pounds now from, Good you know, you. from where I was. And yeah, it's cool, dude. I, I like how I feel right now. I like how I look. It's, mm-hmm. it's healthier. It, you know, it just amazing feels great. Yeah. But you're not planning on starting a third season. We're actually, we, we have been in talks with both A and E and now HGTV, so um, Maybe. we'll see where it goes. I, mm. I think the 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 real strength Pace and I have is that we don't need TV. Of course. So yeah. we have great stuff going on in our Tons businesses. Of leverage on them too. Yeah, and you know, but they but they see the value in who we are, and they yeah. know that the real estate industry is watching us, and they know that people are watching us, and they're looking at it and they're thinking, how can we bring this to our viewers? And so, if the show is right. 
if the show is right. That's the key. If they're willing to let us do what we really do, show what we really do, because what Pace and I do is impact thousands of people. Yeah, that'd be so cool to show. We want to show that. We want to show people that you can be you just do like a, us. Is the hotline what you're talking about? Is that the Compen thing that you're talking about? The hotline that I always see? You yeah, the Wholesale Hotline is a podcast we do on Mondays. It's just, yeah. you know, people ask questions. on. so a, cool to see on TV, though. Yeah. To show, oh my gosh, I could call in and see like how he's doing this. That, or if we even just did an episode about us going into one of our students' lives, you know? Mm. Like, we get people from all walks who join our communities and they have all kinds of issues. Right. Right. And so wouldn't it be neat for us to fly out to wherever the guy is, or even if he's someone local, whatever, we just kind of dive into his world. Okay. Well, what are the stressors? What are the things here that are stopping you from doing the work? Yeah. You joined the community, but let's look at your workspace. Okay. What are you doing all day long? You haven't gotten a deal yet. It's because let's see your organization. How are you tracking your leads? How many people are you talking to every single day? What's your follow-up protocol? You know, really diving yeah, into what they're doing. like flipping people, not homes. Correct. Show them at the beginning and do the changes and then show them after. That'd be so Correct. cool. Yeah. That's it. That's, so that's what you guys are talking about doing right now. Yeah, a little bit of that. Of course, we'll still have to flip houses because everybody wants to see house porn. Mm-hmm. But also beyond that, what about the different projects we do, right? So Pace is involved in RV parks. I've done some multifamily flips. Yeah. So it's really interesting to look at the different asset classes and then also how do we do these deals without needing any money? That's another whole subject matter that Americans don't realize is that you don't need your own money to do these deals. So we could talk about seller finance. We could talk about subject two. We could talk about raising private capital to bring money to the deal for a down payment so that you're not in you're not into this at all for any of your cash if you do a sub two deal you're not into this deal for any of your credit well now you got no cash no credit you didn't need a license to do it you're literally into this deal for nothing nothing (laughs) and you can build wealth that way why do you think they don't make shows about that i think because the the networks have this idea that they're they're customers or their their viewer base isn't sophisticated enough to understand it potentially Mm-hmm. I think second part, so then they, they struggle with how do, we, how do we make this digestible to our viewer in 42 minutes? So that's a, that's a problem we're going to need to figure out how to solve, right? It's hard to explain in it a short It is hard to time. explain. And so I think wrapping your head around that is difficult. I think the other thing is, is that they're probably looking at this from a perspective of, um, okay, if we, if, we, if we show people this, how... How many people will actually go out and do this and do it correctly? And you know, what if they do it incorrectly? And then what if that becomes a liability thing for us? True. Or, so there's just the you know making sure that people know that okay, look, we're not giving you financial advice. Of course, you need to understand the the ins and outs of this, the nooks and crannies of these types of deals. Don't just get out there and you know yep. like a stunt man. I don't want if you watch Chris Angel or you watch David Blaine, don't go immerse yourself in a water right. pit, right? Like learn what you're doing before you go out and try one of these stunts. It'll be the same thing with these deals. Learn what you're doing. Educate yourself. Don't just watch a 42 minute episode and then go out and start locking up contracts. I think there's that complexity that needs to be overcome. But I think if we can understand how to solve that problem, I believe that the American public is smart enough and is hungry enough and is looking at the current system and saying we can't survive in this yeah how are we going to own a home i mean look at the price of home ownership yeah i just i just i just pulled so just this morning i just recorded a uh a a reel and i'll read i'm going to read this to you and i want to get your opinion on the um the the topic of this and basically as I find it, the, the, the average home or the average income that it takes to now purchase a home is $106,000. In 2020, it was $75,000. Right. That's an 80% jump. Meanwhile, wages have gone up by 23%. Now we're in a situation where people can't qualify for a home. Sure. So I think what you're saying is, is on point. What people, that, that was going to be my segue is, and I'll find this real quick, but where do people, I mean, we know where they, they have to make more money. They, there's just, we're not going to, um, 
we're not going to reduce prices. Inflation going down does not mean prices are dropping. It means they're just not going up. Right. So what are we going to do to make more money? And I think that that's exactly why that show would be so important. Um, as I find that, what what do you think of the current state of the market just as a whole? Residential real estate, it's so tight. There's no inventory. Wholesalers, I'm curious how they're handling that. We think rates will drop this year, but it keeps getting pushed back from March, then May, now June, you know. Sure. What are your thoughts on the whole dynamic of the world right now? Well, great questions. So uh, I do believe rates will go down. I don't believe they're going to go down as quickly or as as robustly as people want them to. Here's what I think is going to be a constant. When the United States government made money as cheap as it did in 2020. Yeah, free. Free money, uh, which essentially means 1, 2, 3% mortgages. Yeah, right? 2.6 2. 2. 2. 6 2. 6 6. Yeah, for you? Yeah. Okay, let me ask you a question. Um, you'll probably outgrow the house that you live in right now with a 2.6 mortgage, correct? I already have. I just don't know where I'm going to go. Why okay. would I sell? Well, there you go. That's exactly what people are going to say. Yeah. So even if you do find where you're going to go, even if you figure out where you're going to go, will you ever sell that house? No. No, because you're going to keep that debt, right? Because that debt became what? An Cash asset. Cash flow now. It's an asset. Yeah. The, the, the note became the asset. Yeah. So 70% of the Americans refinanced or purchased during that time, meaning 70% of the homes in the United States crazy. have cheap debt attached to it. So most of those people are going to become accidental landlords before they're going to sell that property. They're going to say, I'm just going to rent this out because rents are up, you know, rents are higher. Yeah, because there's no, there's no, there's huge arbitrage, right? So they can cash flow their existing home. And let's just say they, they move into another house and it's got a 6% mortgage on it, but they're making $1,500 a month extra in the cash flow from renting the house. talking about me, by the way. This is exact right? numbers. Yeah. So now that $1,500, bucks, you are going to use that towards your new mortgage. making your new mortgage payment. You're like, it makes sense. I can just cash flow the arbitrage over here, put it over there. I can justify the 6% rate. I can move up and keep the house. This gets mortgage pay down. I'm still going to get wealth over here, and I'm going to get another house over here. Makes total sense. Mm-hmm. And you're seeing that as the opportunity, as well as every other American out there with that kind of debt. So I don't think it's going to get any better. I think that the people who are out there saying the real estate market is going to crash, they're completely out to lunch. Because there's what's going to erase that 2 3 4% debt? Nothing. In America, that debt lasts 30 yeah. years. In Canada, you might have a 2% loan amortized over 30 years, but the, but the term... Five. Five years. Yep. So in five years, the Canadian banks get to hit reset. Yep. And that Which means they're coming up on. They're coming up on. And so lots of Canadians are going to feel pain. And the housing market in Canada is going to feel pain when people can't requalify for their higher rate. Now they got to mm-hmm. sell or foreclose. That's going to create a dip in the housing market in Canada. But it's not going to happen over here because those terms don't exist. Yeah. So I believe that where we're headed is a a bit of a, an interesting dilemma. So I've been, in, I've been in investing in this different model of rental because the short-term rental game kind of had its peak and you know I own some Airbnbs. They haven't been performing super well. So I'm looking at how do I pivot, right? How do I get out of this Airbnb thing that I thought was going to do really well but isn't doing so well right now and, and, and look at a different type of rental situation. In C and D class neighborhoods, there is a tremendous amount of demand for cheap housing, which doesn't exist. And if you can figure out how to retrofit homes so that you can do co-living, shared accommodation in those properties, Mm -hmm. uh, there's a 99% occupancy in that model right now. Meaning, you if you put out a room for rent, it's done, right? You got a room and a bathroom, you're getting a thousand bucks a month out of that room and a bathroom for a thousand bucks. I got a house out in Maryville right now. I bought it as a three bed, two, I bought this as an experiment to see if I could make it work. Okay. Three bed, two bath. Okay. 1700 square foot, 1700 square feet. I could redesign the whole interior of that. And I ended up getting six bed, five bath. In the same footprint, smaller rooms, but oh wow! But I, but I able, I was able to fit a bed and a little bath into most of these rooms, right? Now I take that and I put it on this platform called Pad Split, and 
what they do is they rent out those rooms for me. So I'm getting a thousand, 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 thousand on six bedrooms. That's six thousand dollars a month gross on the house. Wow. My payment on the house is fifteen hundred bucks. My um, cable, so internet, you utility, all for yeah, them, yeah. utility, yeah. utilities, and 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 internet, another five hundred. So my total two. debt is two. My total cash flow Four. six. Four. My my grow my net cash flow four thousand dollars on that house. Now. Not including your depreciation. Right. Wow. Where am I going to get that kind of return, dude? That's even, I mean, you don't even, it, would you say you don't even have to get that complex where some people could, instead of buying that three bedroom house right now, instead of just renting it out in Tempe, Arizona, they could just go on and, and rent each room, even if it's just keep it three bedroom. It, they're going to get 800,000 for, for each sure. room. For sure. Much more than what they, wow, that's incredible. Yeah. The, the, um, the stat I was trying to find was, Owning the average home in 2024 now requires an income of $106,000. Yeah. Just four years ago, you needed to required income needed to buy that home was 59,000. It's crazy. 80% increase, yet wages went up 23%. It, it, housing affordability is is not even at a low. It's like in the basement underground. I mean, it, I just where, how do we get out of this? Polygamy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But you'd almost need to have like a house I mean, with like what needs to happen, truly. To I mean, is it the most ridiculous collapse of all time? It's a collapse isn't gonna happen. It's a reframe in thinking. Yeah. Right? Because look, two thousand eight, it's not coming back. When, yeah. what we saw there is the crash required a perfect storm of scenario in order for it to have happened. So we've got so much so much legislation, so many um it's Some, hard to get a loan these it's days. It's very hard. You saw what it was like to get the loan you oh, had. It's like, what color I, underwear are you wearing today? I what, couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know, I'm 1099. I'm self-employed. Yep. It was it was three years tax returns, and then I was closing in December of that year, so they wanted bank statements of that. So it was, call it four, four years. There is, I was even saying, there's just no average, you know, I'm 28. There, right. There's not many 28-year-olds that are even, even if they have their shit in a group. Yeah going to be able to get through that process. It, it, it's brain yeah, damage. It, it's crazy. Yeah. It's insane. So that being said, you saw how hard it was to get a mortgage. So the, the likelihood of fraud collapsing the mortgage industry is impossible, mm -hmm. right? Back then we had people that had three houses, four houses on these stated income loans that shouldn't have had the first house in the first place. And so that's what created the collapse, right? It was just really Nobody fraudulent lending. Yeah. People couldn't afford it. They were banking on appreciation. They were using their homes as credit cards. The lenders were in on it. The mortgage brokers were in on it. The housing buyers were in on it. The builders were in on it. Everybody saw it. Nobody cared. And then <laughs> it happened, mm -hmm. right? That's not happening again. The inventory is not just magically going to show up and tank the market. So what's, what's going to change? We're going to change our expectations. Mm -hmm. That's the sad part is Americans are going to need to change their expectations on how we live. And when you see the prevalence of things like pad split, co-living and whatnot coming into the market and showing us how rentals are, are actually changing, right? Um, that, that makes a huge, a huge uh, uh, impact into the, look at this, right? Pad it's, split, yeah, guys. Look at yeah, this. Yeah, it's incredible. 5,000 cash give up. Rent yep. a private room and move in fast. Yep. Search Scottsdale. That's crazy. I've never heard of this. Yeah, and and so dude, this is live right now. He's, right now. Oh, so they rent them by a uh, for by the, a week. By a week. So you got these people out there. They call them the working poor. Okay, which is pretty much most people. Wow. And the they can't. The working poor. They, Isn't that the reality? They're, they're not. They're you know they're making. Now, well, imagine nowadays you can make seventy five thousand as a household income, and you're the working poor. You yeah, can't qualify for well, anything. Well, this is a thousand bucks a month, right, to live yeah. in one of these. So, what do you think the average monthly income is for somebody in Phoenix, Arizona? Four grand a month? No. What do you think? Twenty two hundred. Okay, twenty two hundred. This co living is half your rent. Yeah, it's half your half your more or half of your income. Yeah. I think you're crazy to spend half your income on your living, but you have to. But where are you going to live? Where are you going to live? Right? Live in your... I, you know how many people I see living in their car? It's a real thing. Mm. Right? So so this is where I think the expectations are. I think this is what changes. People are going to change the way they're expecting to live. They're going to... They've got to re... They, they have... 
they have to come to terms with where things are going, which is why you've got so many millennials living at home. It's crazy. It's, it's because they go out into the workforce and they're like, I can't get a job that's going to make this make sense. I can't live out on my own because I can't find a job that's going to make living on my own workable. Yeah. So expectations are going to change. How we live is, is going to change. And then people are going to need to find ways to make more money. I think that's the ticket. It's the ticket. So you didn't, you didn't grow up around money. No. I didn't grow up around money. Nope. We have to go out and figure out how to make more money. Yep. You can't sit and watch. A, I mean, yeah, thanks for watching. You can't sit and watch a million YouTube videos and expect to be rich. You have to go do something. Correct. That's the problem is people are going to have to go do something. I think yep. income is the answer. Do you, do you agree with that statement? 100%. Yeah. Income is the answer. This is, I, I didn't know this was, we were going to take this rabbit hole, but this is, I mean, every city I'm sure that I look up. Yeah. That's crazy. And it's 99% occupied. Like the, these guys. There's want... only nine available. Yeah. That tells me something. Scottsdale's not small. No. Phoenix isn't small. No. There's only nine available. And not because tomorrow those no... will all be full. That's crazy. These guys are desperate for inventory right now. They, they tried to get me on the phone today to say, Jamil, what can we do to get more homes on inventory? I'm like, give me a minute. I'm still, I'm still working with my investors to help increase the number of housing units that you guys have. But like, so right now. That's investors crazy. investors that are working with my sister and I, they're buying homes in areas like Maryville and whatnot, you know, the two hundred and eighty to three hundred thousand dollar mark. Mm -hmm. They're putting twenty percent down to purchase the house using hard money, right? Twenty percent down in construction in order to, to do the construction. Let's just say they're into the house total eighty grand. Okay. Their mortgage payment on that's gonna be about with mortgage and, and um and utilities, 2000 bucks. Just like I just said, they're going to cash flow on $80,000 down. They can cash flow four grand a month. You tell me where 80 grand gets you $4,000 a month in cash flow. It doesn't exist. No. So the opportunity is available. I've got people lining up to do these kinds of deals. It's just now getting enough. You got me excited. Well, bro, it's this is, this is good stuff. Right? Yeah, this like, is incredible. I mean, this right here in itself is like... I mean, this took a turn that I didn't expect. This is phenomenal information for yeah. anybody listening. I'm sure the ideas yeah. are sparking in their head, but to me too, like I was just, um, I was just looking at a chart. Um, anyway, there's there's more money right now in money market funds. I mean, it's not even the same hemisphere than ever before. There's six and a half trillion dollars sitting in money markets, getting five percent a year. Why? Because they don't know where else to put their money. Right. I mean. I think that the the higher the markets get, that's how I mean I'm full I'm I'm very invested and everybody knows that in markets. So I'm I'm always exposed to tons of downside risk. You might not be as exposed to downside risk as I am. They're not investing in the stock market or the crypto market or the gold market because sure. they're all at all time highs. Right. This is something that's we need housing. You need depreciation. You need depreciation. Yep. You want cash flow. Mm-hmm. And you want downside protection. And mortgage pay down. Oh, my gosh. And appreciation. Oh, my gosh. Right? You've got all the tax benefits. You've got the cash flow benefits. You've got the appreciation benefits. What have you benefits. done? I know. I what wrecked it for done? you. What have you done? What a podcast. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. It's so, brilliant, dude. It's, it's I mean, brilliant. It's great. So when you're building these, um, yep. do you set it up like a – like how, do, how does it feel when you walk in with the little rooms? Is it just just – does it feel a little bit more like an apartment building or like, yeah. how does it so feel So we got a inside? common area like the kitchen. That's the right. center of the house, right? Kitchen and little living area is the center of the house. So they all share that. Of course. But then they just go into their hall, down their hallways and into their own little space. So it kind of feels like a dorm. Right. Right. You set them up like dorm style. Are they like single beds in there? Is that yeah. how it's set up? Yeah, single or do it's I like put a little a, dorm. I, I put a queen in there. You're the dorm king. Yeah. Yeah. Put I put a little queen in there and I put a TV in the, each room. Yeah. So they've got... Every room has got their own TV, bathroom, and bed, and they hang. And sometimes you've got a family in there, bro. Like how many of these rooms that I have where there's a, a mom, two kids? Wow. And, it's, and they're, they are But you happy. just started doing this. This just is newer started. to you. Just started. Because yeah. I see this opportunity, and I'm like, well, first, I'm writing a $900,000 check to the IRS this year. Yeah. Right. You Which is stupid. Yeah. I didn't do enough of these last year to have offset my income, mm -hmm. but this year I'm not making that mistake. So this year I'm probably going to add 20 of these to my portfolio 
and that'll give me some like every time I do one of these, I get sixty thousand dollars in tax savings on depreciation, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. So just looking at what I did last year and what I'm gonna have to pay the IRS, if I had just done, you know, fifteen more of these. I wouldn't have paid, yeah. paid any of that money to the IRS. All of it would have gone into investments that are be making cash flow for me right now. And instead of giving that nine hundred grand to the IRS, I give it to my investment portfolio. Got it. Right. Pardon my ignorance on the topic, but do you do do you depreciate it standard of twenty seven and a half years? Or yeah, you do the accelerated. Do you depreciation. accelerate it? Yeah. You accelerate it. Yeah. yeah, you do accelerated depreciation. Of course, that means that don't sell it, so you don't get the recapture. Right. Um, but why would you, right? Why would you want to sell it? Just let mortgage pay down happen. Keep it. These things are occupied. They work. You know, the maintenance and the property management gets taken out of your hands. Like so, with Pat's so these split, guys, um, these guys manage the property too. No. So what they'll do is they fill their units, and then they've got trusted property managers that they'll introduce you to. Like my sister's one. My sister manages doors on this, and she will, Crazy. you know, she will make sure that if there's a maintenance request, you just don't get bothered. Essentially, is the investor, the guy who's owning the house, you never want to hear from them except when the wire is getting sent to you, right? And so that's what she's doing. She's handling the construction. She handles any, you know, nice issues house. that pop up. Yeah, not bad, so right? So a couple fridges. Yep. So they they just make a little bit. This looks like somebody that's doing it for this purpose. Yeah, I mean, couple fridges. That's is, probably a this, telltale sign. This is probably one of one of the ones my sister did. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's funny. How I was like, what has to change? And and you're basically saying you have to change the way that you invest. You have to change the way you look at real estate. People can't afford homes anymore. Yep. Uh, you know, we got to increase our income, but in the meantime, where are you going to live? Yep. There's where you're going to live. Yep. Oh my goodness. And look, man, if I'm just getting started in life. And I'm in this situation. Okay, cool. I get it. I understand. I'm going to be happy in my one room. I got my bathroom here and I'm going to figure out how to make more money. Mm -hmm. I'm going to follow Patrick. I'm going to follow Jamil. I'm going to look at their worlds. I'm going to look at other people who are doing things in their life that are outside the box. Sure, I got a nine to five job, but what can I do on my side time to figure out how to parachute out of this? Because at the end of the day, the nine to five is going to give you the income of $40,000 a year. Yep. And if you already know that you can't qualify for a home, to own a home at $40,000 a year, you, you, it's not going to work. Your college degree isn't setting you up for the lifestyle true. that your parents had. Yep. It's just not going to do it. I mean, love mom to death, but I mean, they pounded it down my throat. I went, I got Mine it. Me too. I, I got my bachelor's. Me too. I, has it ever even a single time be, been beneficial to me? I, I I don't think so. Only in giving me the realization that that I don't want that. It's crazy. Right? Even the friends from college I don't have. People yeah. talk about the college experience like, oh, my God, the college experience. What are you talking about? Alcoholism and drug abuse? <laughs> True. Right? Because that's what yeah. happens in college. Yeah. A lot of it. Sexual assault, drug abuse, alcoholism. Let's be real about what the college experience truly and, is. And, and look at the percentage of students in college that don't finish in four years. It's exactly. over half. Exactly. It's 60 something percent. And I talked to one of the advisors in Penn State because Pace and I had the privilege of going and lecturing at Penn State on real estate. Wow. And had an opportunity to talk to one of the counselors there about you know what people are doing after college. And I just asked, how many people are working in fields that they went to school for? Out of 10, how many, how many work in their field? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5 out of 10? Not even one? Not even one out of 10. No, not even one out of 10. What are they doing? They're just going out and getting into the workplace and trying to find a job, dude. Well, if you, you've hired plenty of people. I've hired people before. I look at the conversations. It was never... What's the degree? It was always show me your work. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're hiring for a technical job, right? What's your you're, a, you're a bookkeeper or you're this. Can I see how you do it? Let me see how you set up your other clients. Let me see your video work. Let me see your. It's all about experience. Oh, you don't have any experience? Well, show me what you. You don't even need experience. Show me what you've created. Johnny behind the camera over there is is filming this. I guarantee you, Johnny's not like. What degree do you have? He's right. saying, can I see some of your edits? Right. That's. It, it, that's the world we live in. It is. And I think that the the unfortunate part, of, I, I'm not against college because what college does to me is it teaches people how to follow through on something they started. Yes, sir. It teaches people how to learn. Yep. And I know that because I'm going through, uh, we, I, we had shared when we were on the phone privately, 
what I'm studying for right now. And I have to like relearn how to learn again. Like my focus is a little off. I'm realizing sitting down for an hour and reading monotonous text isn't as easy as it used to be. Yeah. So and that's where it teaches you. But the information as far as like I have a degree now and you have this paper and you're magically going to walk out that door and get that $100,000 a year job that you think you're going to get. I'm sorry, it's just not happening in 2024 right now. No, no. it's not. And and the sooner we come to that understanding and the sooner that we accept, accept it and the sooner that parents start to understand the reality and stop pushing their children into doing taking on this massive debt because yeah because to me i think that's the most unfortunate thing is like look if the college experience didn't saddle you with a seventy five thousand dollar debt to deal with that you can't file bankruptcy that you can't bankrupt that you can't that you have to pay back (laughs) right like no matter what you've got to pay this back then that that sets people up for the worst situation because you've now got how are you going to now Think about buying a house when you got seventy five thousand dollars in college debt. Yeah, that that uh, what I showed you that little that has nothing to do with debt now. Correct. We're not talking about debt. Yeah. The average Americans in more debt than ever before in history right now. It is. They are. Yeah. And 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 college debt being the highest, yep. the the biggest. It's not credit card. It's nope. college. It's schooling. It's right. Tremendous amount. And then find out how many of those people saddled with that college debt are actually working in a field that they got the debt for. <sighs> and then when they say Patrick Kenny's a scam. Jamil damned you is a scam. And when I hear that and I think, Harvard's a scam. What are you talking about? Yeah. Look, you don't, you can sit here and say what you want about the thing I do or the thing you do. Yeah. Okay. But you went and paid 75, 100,000, 150,000 to go to this school. And they made you take 50% of the classes that you took had nothing to do with your degree program. You could have been in and out of this college in two years, but they extended it to four. Oh, boy. Why? Why money, did money, you, money, money, money. Why did you have to take sociology? Mm. Why did you have to take political science? Why all these electives? What was the purpose of all of these wasted credits when you could have just gone in and gotten what you needed in two years? No. They extended you out an additional two years. And then you've got the balls. To sit here and say an alternate to that is the scam? Yeah. Not... The alternate, by the way, probably costs less than one semester worth of textbooks for one of these places. Exactly. Those books are 600 a pop. Right. There's seven of them you need to buy. Yeah. It's truly... I'm I'm on the same page. It's crazy. It's crazy. So before we wrap this up, share a couple just... There's people... I, I always say that there's people listening every... All these walks of life. There's... I know for a fact that I've got some people that have money that are watching this that are lighting their eyes up right now. I'm going to get a call or a text after this, like, you need to get in contact. We need to do this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But then there's other people. I'd I'd love to connect you to my sister. Oh, this is going to be great. We're going to do something. And when we do it, we're going to document it on my YouTube channel. This this is going to be great. Let's go. But for the people that they don't have the money, like some of the stuff we talked about today might come across as negative. We're talking about college. We're talking about things are changing. People can't afford to live. This is negative stuff. Sure. But Share with them a message of what you would do now. I know you've already shared a little bit. Just what's the mindset to get out of this, to get started, save your first 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 bucks, get on your feet and start making plays in life. I love that you asked about the mindset because I think that's where it starts, right? Yeah. For, forget about what the modality is. It could be Forex, it could be stocks, you know, day trading, it could be wholesaling, it could be creative finance, it could be anything. But first I have to get you out of survival thinking. Okay, if you pull up Maslow's hierarchy of needs, would you mind pulling that up right now so I can give a little uh, elementary school example here of something I learned in uh, grade six that I think is probably one of the most prevalent things uh, today. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy how, how, how they taught, taught me this in the sixth grade, and it finally makes sense to me now as a 45-year-old there it man. Is. Okay, so everything in orange and red is survival. Okay, mm-hmm. so... If you are worried about where you're going to get food, water, shelter, sleep, clothing, reproduction, then you're at that level of thinking. And I can't get you into a higher level of thinking until you satisfy those needs. Okay, so first and foremost, you need to satisfy the physiological needs first. Next, safety. Okay, I got to get you into feeling safe, safety, security in your employment, security in your resources, security in your health, security in your property. Once I can get that dealt with, now I can get you into thinking in the next level. 
The next level is love, belonging, communion, friendship, intimacy. This is where That's I have great. a chance. This is where I've got the chance to get you and to start thinking about what's next. Okay, mm -hmm. and if I can get you there, I can get you from the mind into that green piece, which is the heart. The short look, the longest journey is from the brain to the heart. If if I'm being super real here, the longest journey that we have is from the brain to the heart. How do we get from thinking from the logical mind to thinking from our hearts so we can be creators? Mm -hmm. Because when we become creators, we now co-create our destinies. We now co-create our lives. And that is where we want to be. And that takes us to the top, which is, I think, what you're trying to do, what I'm trying to do, and anybody else out there trying to do is, how do I free myself up with enough time to understand why the F I'm here? Oh, man. And that's it. But I got to get wow. you out of physiological, and I got to get you out of safety. And if I can get you out of physiological and safety, I've got you out of survival. And then yep. everything above that is thriving. Yep. This is where we thrive. But everything below that is where you're in survival. So if you're in survival right now, brother, sister, whoever's listening to this, I, I empathize with you. I understand. Let's, let's as quickly and as efficiently get you into these, get you out of that situation so I can get you into a community, so I can get you into mm. finally understanding what it means to collaborate, to work with other people, to start understanding that we can do so, so much together if we just try, right? Look, yep. Patrick and I are sitting here talking about collabing on a deal together that he's going to document on his YouTube that's going to yep. turn into a thing. Of course, this is, this is collaboration over competition, friends. This is how you do it. Yep. This is how you earn more, live more, impact more, and have it. But I got to get you out of survival first. This hierarchy of needs is one of the most important things that you'll ever understand, but you can't skip steps. You just won't. I can't get you into thinking about the green if you're still in the red. No. And if you look at the, are you involved in meditation or anything of that nature? Uh, I wouldn't say I meditate, but I I, I pause and reflect is okay. how I look at it. Yeah. So the chakra system, which is something that if you're in meditation, is is people will understand it, right? And the colors of the chakras just happen to correspond with the colors on this pyramid. Uh. So if you look at the red here, this is where the root chakra is. This is where if you've ever met those guys and all they think about is sex, mm. where's their level of mind? Mm. In the basic need, yeah. reproduction. Yeah. And then if they're in the le next level of mind, which is in the belly, the, the, just under the navel, they're thinking about how do I get, how do I get, how do I get, how do I fight, how do I stop, how do I fight? It's aggression, it's aggression, it's aggression. Yeah. And then they move into that next energy center, and they're now moving into love, love, belonging, intimacy. And so they're in this solar plexus region of their body. And then if I can get them out of that and into their heart, now they're vibing in their heart. Now they're in that energy center. And then everything beyond that is throat and the head. And that's where we actually get to start creating and, and impacting yeah. lives. This is, everything's connected, dude. Yeah. It's all connected. So where is your level of mind? Ask yourself. you got to be a creator. Wow. Favorite podcast I've ever done, guys. Thank you for coming, brother. Thank this you. This is so good. Thank you, bro. This is so good. Guys, go check him out. All of his social medias will be linked uh, in the description. This one's been fun. And as always, guys, be sure to subscribe on the channel and uh, check all his stuff out. You better go out there, start learning stuff. I hope you learned a thing or two today because everything is right here starting in the mind. We'll see you later, guys. Peace.